Hello again Struck Club, today I'm finally bringing you an updated version of my beginner's guide and this one will be split in multiple parts and I've decided to call it the ultimate newbie guide for Torchlight 3. And this one is part 3, you might want to check parts 1 and 2 if the things discussed in those uh, uh, concern you and you want to know about them. You can also use the timestamps in the description or the chapters in the seek bar uh, at the bottom of the player to skip a Yet. In this one we would be talking about gear and itemization as well as a little bit about pets and pet skills. So let's start with the gear. Now I'm going to talk about something that everyone must be interested in a game like this one. This is the itemization. How the item system works. You've got a few item rarities, you've got white items which are um, the common items. I'm gonna try and hopefully get one from those bundles to show you. Uh, okay, unlucky. <laughs> when you're trying to get a white item and you can't get one. So you've got white items which are uh, basic but they can have three sockets. But even though they have three sockets, the stats you can get on the sockets are not gonna be as strong as the stats you can get on the sockets of a green um, or a blue or, um, or a legendary item. So green items are magic. Um, or actually, yeah, green items should be called magic, um, then um, blue items are rare and uh, orange items are legendary. Magic items can have two sockets and uh, rare and legendary items can have one socket. Of course, the higher the rarity and the stronger um, um, the affix on a socket um, can get, for example, the damage you can get on a certain affix um, on a on a rare item would be stronger than the green one uh, even though you get one more socket on the green item it's not gonna be as strong uh, as the uh, as the item that's blue unless you want to go for some sort of a weird build where you're uh, you want multiple things like multiple chance chance to bleed combined with chance to swallow or chance to burn com combined with chance to poison and there multiple sockets would be nice if you're going for some sort of uh, uh, <laughs> zero damage build where you're applying ailments um, and uh, maybe being the support of the team, uh, maybe your team is not um, applying ailments themselves but they need it uh, so they can proc certain things. So you can have a weapon with chance to bleed and maybe you want to apply poison and burning uh, on it from the two sockets or three sockets on a white. Um, but then uh, I, I don't think a build like this would be worth it but uh, that's kind of how it is. So there are certain things to keep in mind, flat damages and flat defenses and flat HP, things that are flat, not percent, scale as the item level goes. Things like evasion, block chance, crit chance, crit damage, percent damage to a skill, um, uh, percent duration, um, and other things that are percent percentages like uh, knockback, etc. Chance to shock, chance to poison, bleed, and so on. Those and relic energy generation or relic uh, energy cost reduction. Those can be very useful even at level one. For example, you can fight, you can find an item at level one or level two that gives you only evasion and block chance on the whole item, and you can take that item to level 60 and it's gonna be just as good. Look at those level seven shoulders. If I find the same piece of equipment with chance to block gold work and chance to walk at level 60 is gonna be just as good. So save items like this uh, if you wanna make uh, builds that stack chance to walk and stack uh, uh, chance to evade. The cap is 40% uh, chance to block, 40% chance to evade, which I think uh, added up to 36% chance to get hit uh, altogether. Um, so it's actually pretty solid when you stack them and when you get certain other defenses uh, on top of this. Speaking about legendary items now, uh, I would uh, like to mention something called the legendarium. Um, every legendary item has a power. There's uh, 111 legendaries. Every class has around 16 legendaries that are class specific that other heroes cannot use, which is a set uh, containing six items and a bunch of weapons um, and offhands uh, that uh, are specific for this class. Uh, so when you remove three times 16, from 111 you get the number of items every hero can access including the class specific items for that hero. 
Um, so with those items, you can put three of those uh, in your legendarium. How do you get legendary powers? Well, when you find a legendary item as a drop, you gain that legendary item's power. It used to be you needing to dismantle this item, you no longer need to dismantle it, you get that power uh, as you go. And you can have some interesting um, combinations. For example, Two-Tone Pool lets you fire Hard Seeker and Hard Shocker does Chain Lightning. And even if you have a zero points in, um, in Hard Seeker, you can still kind of get it to proc and to do the Chain Lightning. So let's see uh, when it's gonna proc. 10% uh, I see it proc now and it if there was another enemy you would have seen the chain whitening so uh, yeah that's kind of uh, the weird part uh, the good part uh, the, the extra synergy so you can either when one, wear one item uh, and uh, put another one in the legendarium but in general you want all three legendary swords uh, in the legendarium filled up and you want to combine those with uh, with items that you're wearing keep in mind legendary items may not be the best in fact, in many cases, you would want to wear a blue item. Uh, cases like those include weapons. A blue weapon would uh, be much better uh, and much easier to get a strong one than a legendary one. Um, a blue chest and a blue leg armor would be able to give you flat damage. Um, and you can combine that flat damage uh, with the flat damage on the weapon and the flat damage on the other piece of equipment and maybe get boots with percent damage. Keep in mind percent crit damage in most cases would be better than percent damage on the boots. So uh, legendary boots can give you percent crit damage. They cannot give you percent damage. I'm going to show you percent damage boots so you know what I'm talking about. Percent damage boots is this thing percent to a certain element and for example let's say I had on this weapon physical then at the bottom electrical and physical and more physical in the socket and then I had physical here and physical here and then boots with physical and then maybe it could have been stronger than the crit damage but for now if I show you uh, how my damage will change I'm just gonna try and find uh, what's my main damage physical I'm gonna try and find boots with physical to just show you demonstrate this uh, um, instead of just talking, I'd rather show you. Although something with crit damage and percent um, elemental is the best thing you can get as long as it's your level um, or or gives you block and evasion instead of uh, instead of defense. But let's show you. See, I've got 7.9 physical and my physical damage will go up. But do you see my damage going down? Uh, my, my total DPS. Why? Because this total DPS counts for crit chance and crit damage. So my crit damage is going down and that is why um, this extra um, DPS is not as strong. But if I had more flat damages of the physical variety, in the end a bonus physical damage would have been stronger. So for now the difference is very small. Uh, and that's because I only have one physical damage major affix and physical damage in the enchant socket. If I had physical damage in the middle or physical damage in one of those, uh, this one would have been better. So keep that in mind. In many cases you would want blue weapon, blue chest, blue leg and uh, blue boots. Um, in the forged uh, side of things that would equate to blue hatch and blue locomotion. Although they've reversed the locomotion to be on this side and the hatch to be here. Uh, so it might be a little bit confusing, but the hatch is equal to boots and locomotion to the legs. Uh, although it makes no sense to make it like that, because the hatch is kind of uh, in the middle where the pants should be, and uh, and the legs uh, are hitting the ground the same way the boots do. Maybe they might change this later. So in most cases you would be going for uh, the helmet, the shoulders and the gauntlets uh, uh, equipped. And uh, if you're using... Uh, uh, those three it would uh, grant you, uh, I, I'm talking about the Musketeer set for example or the Celestial or the the sets that give you plus two skill points. So every hero has a hero specific set and there's three non-hero specific sets tied to Act 1, Act 2 and to Act 3 and there's another new upcoming set which will be um, tied to the Fazir's Dungeon and you would only be able to get it from the Fazir's Dungeon. So uh, for example from the Musketeer set uh, you can get 
from the hat plus one precision skill levels and if you have three pieces equipped that gives you plus two precision skill levels and from the chest from the rope you get plus two adventurer skills with the set bonus and you can wear three pieces of the set and swat other items of the set in the legendarium and those items in the legendarium would benefit from the set bonuses you cannot however do two pieces equipped and put the third piece in the in the legendarium to get the set bonus so you must wear three if you don't wear three pieces in uh, on yourself you can't get the set bonuses uh, uh, on items that are in the legendarium in most builds i use the helmet the shoulders and the gauntlets and then i swat the rope um, and that's how I do it in most cases and then I squeeze fat damage from the chest and the legs sometimes you can get lucky and get fat damage and percent damage and they might even be matching and that's a OP item uh, that you wouldn't want to lose um, uh, you probably wouldn't want even life bound it unless you're hardcore because it's such a risky thing for for a meta item that drops once in a once in a lifetime um, so yeah, um, the boots, uh, you could use legendary boots until you get something amazing, until you synergize your flat damages to be matching. Uh, um, you can get um, legendary boots with like 39 and 40% crit damage. It's not gonna be bad, but if you get uh, percent, um, percent elemental and crit damage on blue boots, it's probably the best thing for your damage you can, you can do. Um, there's uh, certain things to keep in mind. Uh, shields, not all of them give you built-in defense at the top. If you're going for a shield, you might want to get that. Regardless on what hero and what build, um, shields are great. Um, shields give you survivability. Uh, off hands give you utility. Two-handed weapons are probably um, the things that could make you a glass cannon, but getting a perfectly rolled with three times flat damage at the bottom uh, um, two-hander would be impossible uh, it's possible but super hard so basically you would want damage and crit chance which is always something you get on a two-handed at the top in the middle you would want three times flat and then at the bottom you would want uh, uh, more flat and this is the hard part getting all those flats you can see right now uh, i've got um, a lot of flat damage on my one handed and it's good enough and i actually um, do have stronger damage from a certain uh, bow uh, which i can't remember where i put but i'm pretty sure i've got it somewhere but in any case yeah you can get uh, bows uh, or other two-handed weapons to be stronger this is one example but slightly stronger but this one doesn't have a socket and it has chance uh, to poison instead of a third flat but in general if you want a glass cannon uh, two-hander if you want survivability with a shield and one-handed if you want utility um, uh, you get a focus item you can still get fat damages on focus items but uh, it's not probably gonna be as good as um is a perfectly rolled um, two-handed weapon because the weapon gives you crit chance as well when it's two-handed there is a book where uh, pistols one-handed pistols sometimes give you crit chance uh, and this is going away so don't rely on it pet items uh, can give you different things such as this one uh, when the pet goes fleeing to the town it takes like two minutes or so this one reduces this by 90 percent so the pet returns within like 15 16 seconds uh, let's have a look at the other things there's things that let your pet trigger a nova every eight seconds immune to electric fire or poison damage um, there's things that let your pet uh, heal you and him itself um, by 3% whenever it hits you might want to combine the Dryad neck band with attack speed uh, it's the way I like playing uh, the way I like building my pet there's a clockwork token uh, when the pet uses active skills you get a shock nova in things like the clockwork token you would want to get uh, your pet to have as much cooldown reduction to its active skills as possible and this is where things like uh, token of, in of invigoration becomes very very useful then there's things like the ancient ones token it shouldn't be underestimated that's two extra summons two extra things that can proc things uh, it's very nice on proc monster builds and on minion builds then there's contagion with poison and there's rapid bartering which makes your pet go back to the city to sell 
uh, and return 90% faster. So instead of a two minute and a few seconds, it takes like 16, 17 seconds or so for the pet to go and sell and bring you gold. Um, Normally, the way I build it is a dryad neckband together with uh, whatever gives me um, faster pet cooldown and um, and attack speed. Um, and the rest is fevers, whether it's going to be chance to shock, uh, chance to something else, whether it's going to be block or damage, or crit damage or crit chance, whether it's going to be invigoration, bartering or anything else. Uh, I do like Invigoration, but I do like Bartering and Phoenix as well as bases, but I prioritize the cooldown myself and I try to get uh, I try to get the pet healing skill myself. More about pets uh, later though. The next thing I want to talk about um, is uh, right um, about um, the itemization. It's it's the wife bound. The wife bound system, um, I'm not a big fan of it right now. Um, the way it works right now is uh, you get scrolls of wife bound and the scroll of wife bound makes an item wife bound makes it a 20% stronger item and if you die you lose that item. I think this system can be much better if they change it to a system with your ability. So I take this scroll of wife bound, I take this item, I make it wife bound and then I die and um, then the item is gone. Uh, the way it used to work before is you find a wife bound item then you use a scroll of unbinding that makes this item no longer wife bound but retains the 20% extra stats which okay it wasn't a perfect system um, but it wasn't as punishing as this system I think the best way to uh, change this system to something more useful and that's not just for the hardcore elitist players um, uh, it would be uh, to, for example, if you die on Ridiculous, you lose the item's full durability and you can no longer use the item. And then you might need to use Essence to fix it based on the, dur uh, based on the rarity of the item. You might want to use this Essence or those two or all three Essences to fix that item. And let's say you die on Normal or on Hard. Maybe on hard you lose 50% durability, maybe on practice you lose 25% durability. Something like that would be nice. Maybe it wouldn't be essences, it would be a new resource, a magic anvil, um, a holy hammer, a blessed hammer, um, uh, whatever you want to call it. Sur such a system would be amazing and it would give a, another depth to the wivebound system. And it would also give us uh, something to spend our essences on other than enchanting. And speaking of uh, spending the essences on enchanting, this brings me to the enchanting system. The enchanting system, the way it works right now is you find items with sockets after level 47. If an enemy is under 47, it cannot drop a 47 item. So after 47 items start having sockets and when you have a socket you you kind of can put certain things in there. You can find recipes from contracts, more about those in a moment, and you can find recipes uh, as drops. Once you've learned, learned an recipe, you can just um, you can just do this uh, and consume the recipe and get essence. Um, and you can see that uh, once you click on an item you get access to the recipes you've learned uh, that are viable for this item. If I click on this item it's different uh, things that I can do to it. So as you unlock recipes you're gonna have access to more and what happens is you select the recipe and you enchant it and it costs essence. Based on the item rarity it's gonna cost different types of essences and different amounts. You can see for legendary it costs all three. So let's take this item and then let's enchant it. And let's say I want defense and I don't like this HP. I can disenchant it paying 500 for magic uh, 750 for rare and 1000 for legendary to disenchant. And you can just keep doing that until you run out of uh, gold or until you run out of essences or both. And uh, once you get something you are satisfied with you can just uh, stop um, doing that. Currently uh, I would love to see this system expanding uh, to be able to reroll the affixes in the middle such as for example for this item electric damage and fire defense. Let's say I want to change this fire defense to, to physical damage so I can match it with my weapon 
or let's say I want to change the electric damage to physical and the fire to percent physical to match it with my weapon. And let's say I want to do the same with this uh, to change the ice to to physical and let's say I want to change uh, this to instead of health again per second to give me percent physical. And uh, let's say I want to make sockets. Uh, I would love to see some sort of consumable that allows us to make sockets into items that are no longer socketed. Maybe take a socketed item of the same type with a non-socketed item of the same type, combine them uh, and get um, the, the base, the one you put first, inherit the socket by sacrificing the other. There's many ways they can change that system. It's not perfect, it has the basis of a very good system uh, and it's not that, um, that bad. So as long as they improve it, uh, uh, it can be an amazing system. Um, so enough about the enchanting. Next we can talk about um, uh, relics. Actually, no, let's not talk about relics. Uh, next we can talk about uh, pets and pet skills. Pets and pet skills are something that might need some more improvement as a system. Right now you find a pet, you rescue a pet from a cage uh, next to a boss chest uh, after defeating a boss in a certain map or in a dungeon at the end game and um, the, the rarer the pet such as legendary pets uh, or um, or uh, rare pets like this one the blue ones come with uh, harder to find skills and uh, the skills that are a little bit harder to find would be vampirism, necro pupper and running partner I'm not sure whether necro pupper has been fixed it didn't used to work maybe it works now but those three are the ones that would be the hardest to find. The rest uh, can drop from green or blue pets. I think those really need to be from legendary pets. And legendary pets are just legendary skins, skins that are rarer, harder to find. Um, and once you find the pet, you can decide whether you want to uh, keep it, uh, release it or swap it with your current pet by sending your your uh, old pet uh, into, uh, into the shelter the pet shelter is this thing where you can store up to 50 pets up to 50 pets if you want to catch them all maybe 50 may not be enough uh, if there's more than 50 in the game uh, as um, types and color palettes because you can see there is a chakawari and um, it's blue uh, midnight blue and then there's this one with the green um, brownish ears etc um, so and then there's this one actually that we saw this one with the red and orange and stuff uh, and then you've got different types of cats and so on there's a lot of uh, a lot of different varieties like four five six of each type um, that you can find as different color palettes in general um, there's variety for the skins but for the skills you only have 12 and from those 12 uh, there's four auras you can only wear one aura but if you have four people in the team with different auras, you can still stack all four. Because let's show you. I'm going to put uh, increased awareness. Boom, it removes my deadlier strikes. I'm going to put defender. Boom, it removes my increased awareness. I'm going to put um, the crit chance, deadlier strikes, and it removed my um, defender. So you can have one aura. Uh, you can stack it with other people's different auras. Uh, to to get um, maxed out damages uh, and I mean crit chances, defenses and block chance and movement speed and uh, then you can put different cooldown skills or procs. I really love going with healing friendship and then maybe battle cry or defensive posture and then maybe screeching stun or immobilizing strike or necro pupper maybe on summons if they fixed it. Vampirism is nice but it doesn't heal you only the pet. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So that's kind of it about the pet. Um, uh, I hope this system gets expanded by adding more skills uh, and um, more things to do with the pet. Uh, I really hope that they allow us to, instead of just sending the pet to sell items, which can be done like this. While you're in the fort, your pet only takes 9 seconds to travel and sell items. While you're out in the open, it takes around 2 and something minutes for the pet to sell. If the pet gets defeated, it flees and it's around two and something minutes again. I hope they expand it to give us uh, stances. A defensive stance, a neutral stance and an aggressive stance. Defensive to stay uh, around us and only attack enemies who come close and attack us. Uh, aggressive to go further, um, to have a bigger leash uh, 
um, bigger leash uh, radius and to go attack things uh, on its own and neutral to be basically what we've got right now i hope they improve the ai to be smarter to stay away from danger right now the pet is immune to damage from hazard aue fields on the ground but maybe they can change the ai to avoid those and then make it uh, back to take damage uh, and the way it used to you can heal your pet with potions your own healing potions even if you're if you're at full hp you can still heal your pet if it needs to get healed if the pet is full and you're full it won't let you uh, so that's it for the pets uh, next i'm gonna talk about fourth stuff this was part 3 out of 3. If you haven't watched parts 1 and 2, you might want to watch them uh, if you need to know the information contained in those as well. If you want to get notified when I upload more content, you can subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button, and if you want to be a member of the Struck Club, you can even click on the join button, which is entirely optional. Thanks again for watching the video, keep it cool, and until next time from me, good.